Hey, what's going on guys? It's Voss. I'm here with Tails of the Voss Coin YouTube channel and today we're going to talk to you about CPU mining and GPU mining with the RX 560 and the Ryzen 1700. So if you check out behind me, I have the RX 560. This is the Asus Strix version and then I'm going to have the Ryzen 1700 CPU. So real quick, I'm going to cover the RX 560 and really why do I even have one? There's a lot of better card options out there. However, they're unavailable. The prices are jacked up. If you're paying attention to the market, you know that the market is absolutely jacked right now. Can you even find an RX 570 or 580 for sale? And if you can, it's not there for long. The order limit's like one, and you're paying three to four hundred dollars for a car that was probably going to retail like 250 bucks or whatever it used to be before miners were like, hey, uh, that's a great mining card. So this card, these are all over Amazon for like 120, 30, 40 bucks really good pricing for the card depending on the numbers it can put out. So I'm going to have all the links to everything I can find below in the description. I am an Amazon affiliate and you're supporting Voscom by using those links. So I really appreciate it when you guys do that and I'm opening up my affiliate network to more than just the US, especially the UK, Canada, and I appreciate it when you guys do that. So that's the RX 560. What about the Ryzen 1700? They actually just cut their prices uh, per an article I read. I haven't double checked to see if all this stuff's live on Amazon yet. I will after I uh, edit this video. So these prices may go down a little bit or the market's going to keep them higher. You know, just because they say, hey, we're cutting our prices doesn't really mean that we'll see those prices cut. It's all kind of supply and demand, basic market. You guys know that. So we got both of these. And what's our goal? Kryptonite. Based on the research that I've done online, the Ryzen 1700 with some overclocking can stably hash 1600 hashes on kryptonite that's very good especially in a market where you can't get the vegas really right now and uh those are the kryptonite kings same with the uh rx 560 apparently i haven't done it yet and i'm going to be working day and night to try to make it happen because there's a lot of money to be made there is that these can hash 600 hashes so i'm going to say we can at least get 500 hashes with this card on kryptonite that's very profitable $140 where you're getting the performance of a CPU that hashes on kryptonite that is a good value even at its current price of you know say even up to $300 if you checked out my tri miner video I talked about the Ryzen 1700 and why I use it there and how I believe it's gonna pay off basically within 100 days and as far as I'm concerned making your money back break even ROI whatever you want to call it I'm shooting for a hundred days so I'm working on a benchmark PC. I'm using the TriMiner right now as my benchmark PC. I may just build out a dedicated benchmark PC because I want to launch a whole new benchmarking series. So if you ever wondered about X card, it's right here. This is the best stuff I could get with it. I want to test it on the stock settings and then also the best overclocking settings that I can find or figure out and really just showcase what it does and what it can really do. And basically that's that. If you want to help out, in what you'd like to see in a benchmark series, head over to the Voscoin Facebook group or the Voscoin Discord. And let me know what you want to see in that series because I'm really excited because I get a ton of questions like, yeah, 1070 Ti's are good, but is this one good? I want to know too, personally. I mean, just because it's the same card doesn't mean it's the exact same as far as like a 1070 Ti. So I'll talk more about the Ryzen 1700 in a second, but let's break down the RX 560. What's cool is it's only powered through the PCI riser for better and worse. There's no PCIe slot on top. It's got a pretty good heat sink for being an RX 560. If you notice, a lot of them, a couple of them have just cheap junk heat sinks. So you'll see this is looks like to be one of the best in class as far as engineering goes. And But more importantly, what kind of numbers does it pull? So if you look behind me right here, you'll see I've got nice hash running. I'm not a proponent of nice hash, but it's easy to just grab it, throw it on this computer. And I've got, you know, all the mining software and I'm running the numbers stock. So let's talk stock numbers. Out of the box, the RX 560 is putting out a stable, 303 hash on kryptonite honestly not bad it's really not bad if you consider the price of this card in comparison the ryzen 1700 which i'm very excited about and really just to work with more in depth is putting out a stable 510 to 520 honestly i'd say average 515 hash and that's with a couple of these other programs open and it says it's reporting 530 hashes so maybe that's what it is you want to talk out of the box performance that's pretty good I'm very happy with that. If I can just mess around with the settings, tweak them a little bit and get 600, 650, I mean, it's not even overclocked and it's pushing 530. I don't see why we can't hit something like 650 if, you know, we find a good setting there. But again, more on that later. 
So the market's corrected, prices are down. This is a good thing. I like to make videos when the market's in a correction because you get realistic numbers. I wanna know, like, worst case scenario, what I'm gonna make. Because I wanna base every decision I make off worst case scenario, this is what I'm gonna make. If you base everything off best case scenario, you are setting yourself up to get burned. So on that note, we are making $1.40 a day per nice hash. Pretty realistic. And then on the rise in 1700, we're making $2.46 a day, which is uh, pretty good. Pretty good number as far as I'm concerned. A quick note, if you're wondering, can't we just throw the CPU on some other algorithm? Say, can we mine some Ethereum with our Ryzen? Short answer is no. You can mine other things with your CPU, but realistically, the best and most profitable algorithm besides some off the wall, smaller stuff, would be Kryptonite. CPUs that are good at mining Kryptonite will be profitable here. So out of the box with stock settings, it looks like we're getting 9.2 mega hash a second. And I will say I've seen people report online to, it seems to be not too hard to hit 13 mega hash a second. And people are saying they're hitting 15 mega hash a second stable. So if you take those numbers, this is a rock star card. However, out of the box, 9.2. Not awful, all things considered, but you know, not, not something to switch your whole farm to. Which if you look at the dollar figure, Per nice hash right now, it's coming out to $1.38 a day. Next up, we're gonna mount Equi Hash, which is like Zcash, Zen Cash, Z Classic, Bitcoin Gold, whatever. So we're mining on that. And this is the Claymore Zcash miner. I haven't really used the Claymore Zcash miner extensively. I do know that the general consensus is, in my opinion, DSTM is one of the best or the best Equi Hash miner. So I would assume that these numbers would slightly go up. That's something I'll test you know, in the future, but right now I don't have it installed on here. So we're gonna run with what we've got and we're gonna run with this Claymore Zcash miner. So with that out of the box, we're pushing 120 hashes a second. Okay, and that comes out to $1.27 a day. If you look at the actual dollar figure, it's relatively stable across the three main algorithms across the board. So that's not bad. That's actually kind of good. We got a little stability here. But how can we crank these numbers up? So real quick, I'm gonna show you what adjusted settings can do. All right, so I threw some basic overclock settings on it. I didn't mess with the power draw, the TDP, so the projected power draw for these cards basically is rated at 75 watts. Most people will get lower than that, and in the future, I'll make an optimized build where I find the best value for efficiency. So right now I have it at zero adjustment on the power band, just leaving that static zero. And then I bumped up the core clock on Windows to 1250. So the core clock is at 1250. And the memory I maxed out at 1950. If we want to take it further, we're going to have to go into the BIOS. So I'm just going to grab these afterburner settings right now and see what a quick overclock, how it can change your mining performance. So if you look, I'm getting a stable 132 souls per second. I started out at 136, went to 133, and pretty, pretty stable there. So it's stabilizing at 132. Right now at the current nice hash rate, that's stabilizing out at $1.41 a day. So quick, quick adjustment to your settings, not a bad bump in your daily earnings. So with that quick adjustment to the settings, again, the 1250 core and the 1950 memory, I'm using the same settings on Ethereum, we are now pushing almost 11 mega hash a second. And I'll go a little bit more in depth how to do this if you've never done this, but it's very basic. And if you use common sense, you'll be fine. You can definitely do it. So 11 mega hash a second. So now we're pulling in $1.65 a day on a $140 card. And that's probably maybe even overpriced for this little dude. But I will say he does look nicer. We got a little RGB going on. I mean, sometimes it's the little things. So I'll pay an extra 20 bucks to have the nicer card, especially on the heat sink, because we're going to run our cards 24 seven. You want to have good fans and you want to have a good heat sink. That's basically going to pull the peat off and give you good longevity on your mining rig. As you can see, it's stabilized at 10.9 mega hash a second. That's good. And these are stable settings. I mined with them all yesterday. I was switching between the algorithms. Obviously, this card is not going to be best on EquiHash. Simply put, NVIDIA dominates that. You should never really get an RX card and look for EquiHash coins. In my opinion, you know, obviously, you can do whatever you like and things may change in the future. But just as a general rule of thumb, RX cards are better for ETHash, as aka Ethereum, Hash or Dagimoto, and then there's also Kryptonite, which the RX cards dominate. NVIDIA, on the other hand, dominates EquiHash and Lyra. So, to each their own, utilize your cards where they're best at. That's how you're going to make the best returns. So this is where it starts to get exciting. I'm using the same settings again. Zero adjustment to the power draw, 
1250 core, and 1950 memory. All I did was slide two bars really quick on a free program that I'll include in the description. Now I'm hashing away, as you can see, at a stable 384 hashes a second on Kryptonite. So that pulls up our daily earning values on nice hash to 182 to 184. That's impressive. That's not a bad number. So we take this, we're going to ROI in less than 100 days. Just with that, just with that number, which we can like apparently improve much more. If I can get this to 600 hashes a second, that's a very impressive number, very valuable. I think that we've overlooked these smaller cards because the uh, bigger cards basically have been proven to be so good and successful, but now they're kind of gone. Granted, you know, stock comes in, stock goes out, but if you look at the market as a whole, there's nothing. These are here, though. You could order as many as you want of these, sort of. There's order limits still and everything, but at least you can go on Amazon and actually find them in stock, and it's not some third-party reseller saying, hey, uh, you want that $450 card? It'll be $9.99. Double? No, no, no. I'd rather, I'd rather not even mine. I will also say, if you notice the miner that I was showcasing, I did switch miners. I switched to the Claymore miner, and originally on the first testing, I was using the SG miner, and that's because in the benchmark test, the SG miner showed a higher hash rate in that benchmark. However, after further testing, the Claymore miner was getting a better hash rate. And I'm not saying that these are the best Kryptonite miners. There's the XMR stack, and I'm blanking on the other couple, but there's several other options which I may be able to get even higher hash rate just on these same settings. This is just a basic benchmark video. So in the essence of full transparency and not trying to hype some stuff up, like I actually just switched a miner to make my hash rate look better. I'm gonna go ahead and run the same Claymore miner on the stock settings. To revert to your stock settings, you're just gonna click on that little like replay icon on the MSI Afterburner. It's just the icon right there in the middle you can see, and it's gonna to revert to your stock settings. So if you look on the stock settings, we're getting 295 hashes a second. Now it's up to 302 hashes a second on that miner. So you can comfortably say that those quick adjustments, which are not the end all be all, there is much more modding to be done there, effectively increased your hash rate by almost 25% or 33%. That's correct, right? Yeah. If you want to be a math guru, it's probably more like 30%, but whatever. So I'm going to show you something that's going to be kind of impressive. And if you're going to order this stuff, Use your boys links. So let's take both of these parts and just my basic overclock settings on the card. And again, I'm going to have a follow up video. So make sure to subscribe because I'm going to break this card down and I'm going to figure out how to make it a hashing monster or break it. One or the other. Determined. So let's take the retail. The Ryzen 1700, don't quote me on a price. Right now it's like 290 bucks, right? And this card that I bought you can commonly see it for around 140 bucks, plus or minus like 10 bucks, plus all the other RX 560s should be hashing about the same. I mean, roughly. It could be better, it could be worse. This has Micron memory in it, if you're curious. So we take those numbers, $430, right? And just off these basic numbers, right now, based on its stable settings, we're actually making like $4.32 a day. What does that come out to? Well, if we took $4, 32 cents times 100, that's $432. That's a great break even point. I mean, obviously, you need to consider the whole rig you're building this into and whatever that purpose may be, but that's a lot of money for not spending a lot of money. As far as a budget setup, this is a pretty budget minded setup, as far as I'm concerned, because a CPU is a core component. This could be your gaming rig that you mine with. So there you have it guys, that's as, far, that's as far as I'm going to go on this stuff today. This is a basic benchmark, this is a rough draft for my benchmark series. I'm just kind of touching on some parts that I think are really relevant right now that you could fill your card up with right now and begin mining right now because mining today is better than mining tomorrow and mining yesterday is better than all of this. Again, so it's up to you, make your own decisions, just do whatever you want and whatever you can afford. I'm not here to put out all this BS hype. Do what you want to do, have fun. That's what life's about. Don't spend more than you can afford to lose or risk or anything like that. You don't live off ramen and peanut butter like I have been this year. But granted, it's also a risk versus reward. Nothing venture, nothing gained. 
So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please make sure to subscribe to the Boss Coin YouTube channel. Again, all the links below and every part I'm using here today. Check out my Tri Miner video for that crazy build I have going on. I have a Vega build coming up. I have two RX, other RX cards. They're both 570s, a four gig and an eight gig. I'll be building out eight cards of those. I've got some 1030, three gigabytes. I don't know, I have too much work. It's driving me insane. It's actually really stressing me out. Oh, also, you can go ahead and click off now if you're bored with the video, but we're gonna do a quick unboxing. I totally forgot. We've got this bark box here. This was donated by a subscriber. So the coin alley, thank you so much, man. The Bitcoin you donated, you said, you know, basically buy her some treats or some balls or whatever. I decided to get a bark box for her. So it actually came out to be like exactly a donation amount, which was pretty cool. So I just ordered one of their recent boxes. It has this really, really funny acorn toy. I mean, look at this. So the dog opens it up and then there's a mad or sad acorn on the inside. That's funny. It's a toy inside of a toy. But it's also kind of rewarding to re destroy your toy, so it's like backwards logic, but it's funny and just, you know, as a parent or an owner, whatever you want to call yourself, it's pretty, it's cute or whatever. So here we go, we got the Bark Box. I went ahead and I threw the, uh, the Dragon Toy. This is what the coupon code got, you know, free toy. Pretty sweet, right? I mean, come on, Tails. Hey, what's that? And then we've got this Tug Toy on a rope with these little boots. Oh, they squeak in the boots too. T Tails, what do you think? I mean, can you say thank you, the coin alley? I mean, come on here. We're like a... No, that, that, <laughs> that, that stresses you out. We're not going to do that. And then we got this little hedgehog dude. Uh-oh. Uh oh, hedgehog kind of looks like a hit. Kind of looks like she's picking... Oh, oh, there it is. She picked the hedgehog so far. Next up, we've got some treats, turkey and cranberry poppers. I mean, clearly they're a hit. I didn't even ask if she wanted it, and she took it right out. Honestly, these smell really good. Is this gonna be weird? Uh, whatever. I'm gonna try one. I always wonder like, okay, she, she's gonna try one. Okay, clearly these, these are hit. I'm, I'm not gonna try one. I don't want to eat her food because clearly she's digging them. Got some premium elk. I, I've never had elk. It's an elk chew. Yep. That's a, all right. That's, that's one way in. We'll come back to the elk chew. And then we've got jerky sticks. Sounds like another thing I'd want. Are these for her or are they for me? I'm telling you, this smells just like a freaking uh, Slim Jim. I mean, she's like, why are all these toys on my spot? I, 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 li I live on a tire. Uh-oh, she's, ta she's taking it to her lair. T Tails? T Tails, shoot a movie, Tails. I could not even get to her before she ate this entire thing. So let's try again. Stay. Good girl. I mean, clearly, clearly this tastes good. All right, is this gonna be weird? I'm gonna try one. I'm, I'm just always curious, you know. Break a little piece off. I mean, honestly, I'm telling you guys, it smells good. I'm not gonna try that piece. I'm gonna try this piece. Honestly, honestly, this tastes like human food. I'll be honest. I've tried a couple dog treats in my life, okay? Like... I swear this says for your dog and you would like to eat this. I, I, I promise you, you would enjoy eating this. I kind of want it. Alright, honestly, the elk chew smells kind of gnarly. I'm not gonna eat dog treats that smell gnarly. If they can trick me and it smells good, I'll give it a shot. But, uh... Yeah, this is gonna mess you up. Elk chew. All right guys, so there you have it. RX 560, the Ryzen 1700, Bark Box, and did I or did I not try dog food? Come on, just try it. No. Why not? Because it's weird. It's dog food, it's not food for humans. I don't wanna eat dog food. Buddy, come on. Ew! That's gross. Try it. No.